Hello everybody, I'm Jonathan and welcome to the House of Faith. Let's pray together and get right into the Word. Lord, thank you so much for this time that we have to hear your Word and to give place and to put value on your things. Lord, we're asking you and we're expecting to receive revelation knowledge from you today. We're expecting to receive answers to questions. Thank you, Lord, that we have eyes that see Jesus, ears that hear his voice, and hearts that are wide open, ready to receive your word. Lord, we honor you. Your things are valuable to us. Your word is valuable to us. And today we will give place to your word. We're ready to receive all that you have for us today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want to commend you for watching these broadcasts. We're talking about honor, and I want to commend you for actually listening to the Word and giving place to Him. There's a lot of folks who don't even listen to, to teaching at all, <laughs> but you're to be commended for making time to hear the Word and for putting God's things as a priority in your life. You're to be commended for that. So grab your Bibles, grab your notebooks, and let's really make the most out of today's broadcast together. We've been talking about a life of honor. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse number 30, it says, Therefore the Lord, of, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Again, this puts the ball in your court. You know, we can honor God. It's a choice that we make. God's always been a God of choices. He, even in the Garden of Eden, he said, you can eat of every fruit of every tree except for that one. And people say, well, why did God do that? Because love always gives a choice. God's not forcing his will or imposing his will and his way on anybody or in anybody's life. So people have a choice to make. He even said today, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. You get to choose. Choose you this day, tell me who will you serve. You get the choice to make. It's The choice is yours, it belongs to you. Will you honor God? Will you live a life that values His things, that, that esteems His things properly, that gives weight to His things? Will you be a part of that? Will you make that decision for you? Will you make that decision for your household, for your family? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will honor the Lord. We will honor his things. We will give weight to his things. And you can make that decision. No one can make it for you. No one's going to make it for you. Even God won't make it for you. But will you live a life? Will your house be a house of honor for God? Let your house be a house of honor. Yes, this is a house of faith, but this is also a house of honor. Uh, I want to read to you guys out of the book of Revelation. We've been talking about this just to kind of further prove some of the things that we're talking about, that Jesus is not just going to impose his will, force it on anybody. He's, he's not going to make you do anything. Uh, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus is talking. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What is that? We, we said this last week. The Holy Spirit is a genius, but he's also a gentleman. He's not just going to force himself in any situation and make it happen any certain way. That's not how he operates. He operates through your invitation. Notice this. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Now, we like to sing songs about this, right? That God's going to, there's no door he wouldn't kick open. Well, the only problem with that is that's not biblical. That's not what he's saying. Jesus is not standing at the door saying, I'm going to kick this door open and I'm coming in whether you want me to or not. That's not how he operates. He stands at the door and he knocks. He's knocking at the door. Will you hear his voice? That's what he's saying. Anyone who hears my voice and opens the door. So who, who gets to, the, who's making the decision? Whose choice is it? It's yours. The choice belongs to you, whether you allow him in or not. And a lot of it has to do with honor, that we're honoring him, giving him place. He has a place in my heart. He has a place in my life. He has a place in my marriage. He has a place in our ministry. And that place is always at the top, the head. He is always numero uno. <laughs> Jesus is always number one. 
which means I will sacrifice anything of the flesh and I'll even make sacrifices to ensure that my life is honorable to him and that we're doing and obeying what he asks us to do in faith. And I, there are sacrifices that, that sometimes we have to make, and sometimes it's a sacrifice on your flesh. Well, I don't want to get up and pray, but because I want to honor God, I'm going to get up and I value his things. I'm going to give more weight to him than me sleeping an extra 15 minutes. Amen. And whatever it is in your life, let's make sure that we're always giving him and his things more weight than anything else. Make the decision. Nothing is more valuable. Nothing is more worthy of glory. Nothing is more worthy of honor in my life than God and his things. Because Jesus is standing at the door and he's knocking. Will you allow him to come in? Will you give him that place? We said this last week, what Pastor Jeremy Pearson says, that honor is what opens the door. Honor opens the door. Jesus is standing at the door and knocking, but honor is what opens the door to allow him to come in. That's what gives him place, is honor. And when you honor him, he said, I will honor you. I want to go through today a few scriptures. Last week, we kind of ended in... Mark chapter 6, where Jesus um, was in his own hometown preaching. And I want to read that again, but then I want to go through Mark chapter 5 and kind of see the opposite and some other things that happened and took place. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go through Mark chapter 5 first, and then we'll, we'll finish with Mark chapter 6 again. I think that's right. That seems right to me on the inside. So let's start with in Mark chapter 5 uh, in verse number 1. Uh, it says, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadareans. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out, cutting himself with stones. This man is tormented with demons. This is crazy naked guy. This is apparently very strong crazy naked guy who's been up in these mountains being tormented by demons, possessed by demons. And notice this in verse number six. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. He's, at the, he's now at the feet of Jesus worshiping him. That's wild to me. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have, I to you with, what have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Now, these are the demons talking through him, right? That Jesus don't torment us, which tells me Jesus can torment them, <laughs> right? And verse number eight, it says, For he said to them, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. They had to ask Jesus for permission to do anything. Who's in control there? The demons are not in control. And you need to know that, that the devil is not in control of your life. Now, listen, God is also not in control of everything happening in your life because the same authority Jesus operated in right here is the same authority he's given to you and I. We can do the same thing Jesus said. Jesus said that these works that I do, you'll do also. And even greater works than these you shall do because I go to my Father. You have authority in the name of Jesus over all of hell, over every demon, and over the devil himself. We need to act like it. We need to be bold. Like bold as lions, Proverbs 28, 1 says, that the righteous are as bold as lions. We need to be bold as lions in this life. Don't cower under in fear. Rise up in faith and be bold in who you are in Jesus' name. And so Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. 
There were about 2,000, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned into the sea. Uh, let's skip on down just for sake of time to verse 16. And it says, And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who, who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. So this man's totally free. This man is now free from demonic oppression and possession. This is Jesus being Jesus. <laughs> he is being freedom and liberty to this man. And uh, verse number 17, it says, Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. To plead with who? Jesus. <laughs> They're pleading with Jesus to depart. And instead of welcoming Jesus, because I'm sure there were other people there that probably needed help and that probably needed what Jesus had to offer. And yet they pleaded with him and said, leave. What is that? No honor. No honor. Instead of falling at his feet and worshiping him, they're pleading with him saying, please get out of here. We're freaked out right now. You need to leave. And then notice this. And when he got in the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Wow. So crazy, strong, naked guy is now that crazy, strong evangelist guy. The guy who was demon-possessed and was well known for being demon-possessed, is now the one that's evangelizing his friends and his community, telling them all that Jesus did for him. Wow, isn't that amazing? But it all started with him at the feet of Jesus earlier in that chapter. Now, we continue on in verse number 21. It says, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. We're noticing this again. What is that? That's honor, right? He's kneeling at the feet of Jesus. That's honor. And notice what he's saying. He says, he begged him earnestly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed and thronged him. Now, while Jesus is on his way, we know this story. You may be familiar with this. This is the woman with the issue of blood. But notice here, um, you know, she came up behind him. She touched his garment and she was healed. In verse number um, 32, it says, And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Again, this is honor. <laughs> This is putting Jesus, elevating Jesus to a place that only he deserves to be in. It's elevating Jesus and esteeming him properly, giving him place, giving him proper place and giving weight to him. It's falling at his feet. This is wonderful. This is honor to the Lord. And Jesus responded. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Honor. We're seeing this consistently over and over again. But notice this right here. This is interesting to me. While he was still speaking, this is verse number 35. Some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? What is that? Common. It's treating Jesus as common. Do you remember when Jesus was talking with his disciples? And he said, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say you're Elijah, or you're one of the prophets, or you're one of something. But then he said, who do you say that I am? Now listen, that is the most important question you could ever answer in your life, is who do you say Jesus is? You get to make that choice. Who do you say Jesus is. And Peter spoke up and he said, you are Jesus, the son of the living God, which means you're not one of anything. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. There's a big difference. What is he doing? He's elevating Jesus to a place that there's no one else with him. 
There's no one else like him. There's no one else beside him. There's no one above him. He's elevating him to his proper place of honor. This is amazing. Jesus is not one of anything. He is not just a teacher. And whether, I don't think it was ill-intended, but what I'm saying is just even having that subtlety of Jesus was just a teacher. You know, I saw a report just the other day um, where there were 43% of Christians who didn't even believe Jesus was the Son of God. What? They believed he was a good teacher. They believed he was a prophet, but they didn't even believe that he was the Son of God. And it just shows how kind of far off we've gotten in some of these things. We, where's the honor? <laughs> where's the place of honor for, for Jesus? Jesus is worthy. And we said this in the first broadcast. We kind of described what honor is. Honor is, is value. It's esteem. It's prize. It's treasure. It's, it's worthy of glory. That's what it means to honor. Is Jesus worthy of glory? Absolutely he is. Jesus is worthy of all glory. Amen. He deserves our honor. He is worthy of our honor. Jesus is so good. He is the Son of God. He is in an elevated place. And this is what we talked about, not getting too familiar with him, not just treating him as common. Well, that's just Jesus. Yes, <laughs> That is Jesus, and Jesus is our friend, and we understand that. And God is our Father, yes. But we, have, we should hold such a place in our heart of honor towards God, towards Jesus, towards the things of God, towards the kingdom of God. And honor like no other. I honor no one else the way I honor my God. I only reserve my worship for Him. I reserve my praise for Him. I reserve all of my, all the glory of all of my life. I reserve that for him. You know, that's really a big part of what worship is. Worship is simply giving something to God that you don't give to anybody else. That's one way to describe it for you. Easy way for us to understand it. Worship, I'm going to give God something I don't give to anybody else. I don't worship anybody else. I don't worship any other God. I don't worship anything else, anybody else over my God, over Jesus. Why? They're worthy of my worship. And in my eyes, nothing else is. There is nothing else in my life, about my life, that's worthy of worship other than Jesus. Jesus is worthy of my worship. And I reserve all of my worship for him. So they said to uh, this ruler of the synagogue, this servant of the ruler of the synagogue's house, he said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? You know what he did inadvertently? He immediately took all, there was no faith in this anymore. This, this servant was obviously not believing that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. Because if he did, he would believe that this, <laughs> let's, let's keep going with this. You know, she's dead, but you know, you, you've got the right man. He's the one that, that can bring the dead to life. And I'm not saying he needed to know all of that. You know, I'm sure a lot of this was still new to him. But it's just that simple fact of he's not just a teacher. Jesus is not just a teacher. He's not just a prophet. And if you ask even a lot of people, even atheists will agree that Jesus existed. Great. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. It says even the demons believe in God's existence. I don't want demon faith. Even the demons believe he exists. Who cares? But who is Jesus to me? He's not just a teacher. He's not just a prophet. And he's not just a man who existed a long time ago. Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And there is no one else like him. There is, there is no one else like Jesus. No one. No one compares to him to his majesty, to his glory, to his, to his wonderfulness. There's no one that even comes close to comparing to Jesus. That's how I see him. How do you see him? Who do you say Jesus is? 
Because that's what matters, man. Jesus is standing at the door and he's knocking. But are you going to open the door or not? I've opened the door. I said, Jesus, <laughs> every part of my life, man, I want you involved in it. I want you involved in every part of my life. Jesus, you're not just my Savior. You are my Lord. You are my Master. Anything you say goes. That's a level of respect and reverence and honor that I don't give to anybody else because no one else is as worthy as my Jesus. That doesn't mean I don't honor other people. That doesn't mean I don't love other people or respect other people. But what I'm saying is I set Jesus on a level. I elevate Jesus on a level far above everybody else. Because if I don't, I'm going to end up treating him as common and treating his things as common. And as we already talked about, that's one of the most subtle and most dangerous places we can be, is treating the things of God as common. And so, of course, we'll just skip on down just, just for a little bit. Uh, let's go into um, uh, verse 38. It says, And then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. What is that? <laughs> not honor. <laughs> it's not respect and reverence. They ridiculed Jesus. This was a, a tumult. These were professional criers. These were people who, you know, went to, to, to weep and to wail at, at, at the loss of families. These, these were people that were just, they were there for the sadness, right? They were there for the depression. But then Jesus is saying, she's not dead, she's sleeping. Now, these words should matter because this is, this is not just coming from a man. This is coming from the Christ. This is coming from Jesus. And now Jairus has a decision to make because look at this. They ridiculed him, but when he, Jesus, put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. He put those outside. Jairus had a decision to make. I'm sure a part of these people were some of his friends and family, maybe co-workers, people that he had known, right? He could have ridiculed Jesus with them, but he had a decision to make. Do I continue to honor him and keep my faith in him, or do I lose my honor and respect for him and take my faith out of him? Listen, honor and faith, they always go hand in hand. Always. Listen, this is the house of faith. This is also a house of honor. Because without honor, there is no faith. <laughs> what am I putting my faith in? I'm putting in my faith into Jesus that I don't honor? No way. But he put them all outside. And then he, he took the child by the hand. And he said to her, Talithia Kumai, which is translated, Little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. Jairus made a decision to keep honoring Jesus. And then he got his miracle. No honor, no faith. No faith, no miracle. This starts with honor. This starts with honor. And then in, ver in, in chapter 6, we see Jesus teaching and they said, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? This is, they're not saying he is the Christ, the son of the living God. They're not giving him his proper place. And then notice what happened. They were offended at him. Listen, honor will keep your heart soft towards the Lord instead of having a hard heart. A heart of stone, a heart of that's calloused over. Honor will keep your heart soft and tender towards the Lord. But notice this in verse number five. So there was no honor, no respect, no reverence. And it says, and he, Jesus, could do. Not that he wouldn't, but he couldn't. He could do no mighty work there, except he laid his hands on a few sick people and he healed them. And he marveled of he marveled because of their unbelief. No honor will always lead to unbelief. Always. Jesus' hometown is the only town that we see in all of the four Gospels that didn't have a notable miracle. Why? Because they were the only town that didn't honor Jesus. Let our life be a life of honor, a house of honor towards the things of Jesus. He's not common. He's valued. He's valuable. And we consider him and his things precious. I'm out of time. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in just a minute. 
when there's depression that's there, when there's anxiety and fear and worry that's trying to sit in, God, you, you are the Prince of Peace, Jesus. You give me joy. Whatever you have need of, it's acknowledging Him as the one who can meet the need. Honor is the key to great faith. Honoring Jesus, that's the key to great faith. If you don't honor the revelation that's entrusted to you, it'll be taken from you. The devil comes to steal the word. He's engaged in this fight of faith. Are you? For your gifts of any amount this month, Cowan Ministries would like to offer you Pastor Jonathan's message, The Key to Great Faith. To request this offer, visit us at cowanministries.org or call us at 706-363-0771. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. We are so thankful and excited that you guys joined us today. I tell you what, we're really excited about everything God's doing here at the ministry and through this broadcast. We're just so thankful for all the good things God's doing. Hey, listen, I want to encourage you to avail yourself to this month's uh, product offer with the teaching, The Key to Great Faith. We're talking about a lot of things that we've been talking about on this broadcast this month. Let me give you just a quick sneak peek. The key to great faith is honor. And we talk about a lot of these things. It's a wonderful teaching. I encourage you to download it, get a, get a hold of it, whatever you can. Do whatever you can. The information's right here on the screen. I encourage you guys to go to Cowan Ministries and order this product because I believe it'll be a blessing to you. Just a quick update on our Going Strong project. Man, we are rejoicing so much because we have crossed that 1% of, of the, with our partners. We're believing God for a thousand partners. Uh, we're so excited about everything God's doing. Thank you for everybody who has partnered with us. And we believe that God has greater things in store for us. Now listen, we started this project not just because we have a need. We started this project in obedience to the Lord. He said to start the project. He set the parameters. We said, yes, sir. And we're endeavoring to follow him. But whenever we start projects, it's not just because we have a need, but there's something that the Lord's trying to get to you, to flow to you and to your life. And going strong, we're not just supposed to be going, but going strong. Going strong in our businesses, in our marriages, in our families, in our bodies, in our finances. Going strong. And your partnership with us helps us to get this word out. It helps us to do the House of Faith broadcasts, helps us to get our books out and helps us to go and take this gospel out and to go and preach to anybody who will listen. So we appreciate your partnership. If you haven't partnered with us, pray about it. Seek the Lord. See if that's something he would have you do and be obedient to him if he's leading you to do it. Amen. Let me pray for you real quick. Father, thank you so much for your goodness, for your faithfulness to us. Lord, I pray a special blessing over every single person that's watching today, that's listening. Thank you for your favor that surrounds them as a shield and that everything they do, everything they put their hand to do is blessed, prosperous, and succeeding. That this year they're going strong in you, Lord, and they're flourishing and thriving in the places that you've planted them. In Jesus' mighty name. We love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part of our wonderful family of faith. Join us next time here on The House of Faith.